Scooby-Doo is one of the most beloved and enjoyable animated series of all time. The show has seen several different series which have different animation styles and villains. The main idea is always the same, though. The show is about a group of teenagers and their dog, Scooby-Doo. They travel around in a cool van called the Mystery Machine. Together, they solve mysteries where there are spooky creatures that seem scary, but usually turn out to be just people in disguise. Now, since there is a lot, and I mean a lot, to cover, I'll try my best to include everything. No promises, though. Going into the gang, Shaggy is usually from a made-up place called Coolsville in Ohio. When he was ready for school, he got Scooby-Doo from a puppy farm. After that, he met his friends Fred, Daphne, and Velma. They all became a team and started solving mysteries together. Now, even though the first installment of the series is titled Scooby-Doo, Where Are You?, there is a prequel titled A Pup Named Scooby-Doo. In its first episode of this series, we see a younger Shaggy and Scooby delivering newspapers. One day, a green ghost takes Shaggy's bike while they're working, so Shaggy calls the Scooby-Doo Detective Agency, later called the Mystery Inc., which includes Shaggy, Scooby, Velma, Daphne, and Freddy to solve this case. Eventually, the ghost is revealed to be Shaggy's boss, Mr. Conrad, who was making counterfeit money and needed Shaggy's bike chain. After this incident, Shaggy decided to quit his job and became a full-time detective. Now, let's talk about the first season of the franchise, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? In the first episode of this series, Professor Hyde White is transporting his spooky suit of armor, but it unexpectedly comes to life. Scooby and Shaggy, back from a movie, find the empty truck and a motionless suit. The gang starts investigating, and the clues lead them to Professor Hyde White, who is missing. They explore a museum and find a secret room with stolen paintings, meeting the Black Knight. When they unmask him, it turns out to be Mr. Wickles. The gang exposes a plan involving fake paintings and smuggling, and they rescue Professor Hyde White. The gang is drawn into a mystery involving mysterious glowing footprints and a ghost diver at Rocky Point Beach. They encounter Ebenezer Shark, who believes Captain Cutler's ghost is behind the disappearance of yachts. Investigating further, they discover Cutler's wife practicing witchcraft and find glowing seaweed. Exploring the graveyard of ships, Scooby and Shaggy have underwater encounters with the ghost. In the end, the gang successfully traps the ghost, revealing him to be the real Captain Cutler. It turns out, he faked his death to steal yachts with his wife, using the ghostly appearance as a cover. Another mystery is solved by the gang. The gang goes on an investigation at an amusement park where things are mysteriously running without operators. They witness a figure resembling a Martian and encounter chaos as rides go haywire. Attempting to catch the culprit, they accidentally cause more chaos with a trap. The real culprit is revealed to be a robot named Charlie, created by the caretakers to run the park. However, Miss Jenkins sabotaged Charlie, thinking kids need humans, not robots. With the mystery solved, Mr. Jenkins rebuilds Charlie to be kind, and the adventure ends with the robot gently scratching Scooby's ears. In a later episode, the gang hears about the ghost of Redbeard causing trouble for fighters owned by a guy named Magnus. While investigating, they learn about the pirate's history by sneaking into Magnus's apartment. In an attempt to lure Redbeard, they accidentally board the ghost ship. Fred and the girls get locked in, and Shaggy and Scooby cook a strange stew for Redbeard. The duo manages to escape, leading the gang to a hidden cave. Unmasking Redbeard, they reveal him as Magnus himself, who staged a pirate ghost to steal and sell his own cargo due to financial troubles. Fred, Daphne, Velma, Scooby, and Shaggy come across a headless specter haunting a mansion while on their way to a rock festival. The gang discovers that the specter is actually a helium-filled balloon under a sheet operated by Penrod Stillwall. Penrod is a descendant of the mansion's owner and created the ghost to scare people away way so he could search for hidden treasure. The gang decides to help Penrod find the treasure. During their search, they uncover the real culprit, Asa Shanks, who was also after the wealth. In the end, they find a bag filled with dollar bills hidden in a column and return it to the rightful owner. The gang visits Velma's Uncle Dave at a Native American reservation near the U.S.-Canadian border. They learn about the legend of the Willowa, a fiery creature that abducts individuals whose names are called by an owl. Uncle Dave goes missing, believed to be taken by the Willowa. The gang, along with Chief Red Heron, investigates the mysterious disappearances. They uncover a smuggling operation run by 
by a person named Gray Fox. Gray Fox used a jet-powered helium balloon disguised as the Willowat to create the mysterious sightings. The culprits are caught, and it's revealed that Uncle Dave was kidnapped and locked up by Gray Fox for discovering their illegal activities. As they walk home, an owl playfully calls Scooby's name, making the group laugh. The gang visits Velma's friend Aggie McDuff in Scotland. They encounter a ghostly Scottish Highlander and a Loch Ness monster at the nearby loch. Aggie reveals that her castle, now a tourist attraction, is haunted by the ghost of her great-grandfather, Finian McDuff and the Loch Ness Monster is scaring tourists. While staying there, the gang experiences encounters with the ghost and the monster. During their investigation of the castle, they discover a hidden section with a stash of Swiss wristwatches. This leads to the revelation that Jamie Craigmore, Aggie's assistant, is the smuggler behind the ghostly apparitions and the mechanical Loch Ness Monster, and brings peace to McDuff Castle. The gang visits Daphne's aunt, Olivia Derby, in New York. They witness a robbery at a jewelry store, and Scooby encounters a mysterious cat-like creature in the sewer. Olivia reveals that she's been having nightmares since receiving a cat medallion in the mail. To uncover the mystery, they investigate the source of the package and the jewelry store robbery, linking both to a cemetery. They discover a trap door connecting the store and the cemetery and confront Olivia's doctor, Dr. Bell. He has been using the cat medallion to hypnotize Olivia, planning to frame her for the robbery while stealing valuable jewels himself. The gang exposes Dr. Bell's scheme with Scooby playing a key role in capturing the cat creature. Now following this series, we have the new Scooby-Doo movies. The Mystery Inc. gang finds himself stranded in a ghost town theme park run by the Three Stooges. They work together to solve mysterious occurrences threatening the park's business. Suspecting the caretaker Rhino and manager Amos Crunch, they uncover fake elements like a dinosaur, mechanical T-Rex roars, and a rigged Indian war dance. Dance. Velma disappears, and the gang faces spooky encounters and discovers a uranium-filled mine. Trapped, they use a ventilation pipe to communicate. Shaggy and Scooby befriend Tyrone, a T-Rex attraction, to rescue their friends. The villains, Crunch and Rhino, are revealed to be mining uranium illegally. With the Three Stooges reopening the park, Shaggy and Scooby are rewarded with a hero sandwich. On their way to the Mystery Club convention, the Mystery Inc. gang teams up with Batman and Robin to investigate a mysterious plane delivery. They follow the trail to a farmhouse, where they find counterfeit money hidden in a punch cloud. Working together, Batman, Robin, and Mystery Inc. face traps in spooky situations. After some mix-ups, they discover Mrs. Baker, the seemingly harmless old woman, is behind the counterfeiting scheme. The villains are caught, Scooby-Doo gets his bat snacks, and the teams share a laugh. The gang, joined by the Three Stooges, encounters a mysterious ghost resembling the Red Baron, who sabotages a crop duster at an airfield. They team up to investigate, and discover a ghost pilot causing trouble for the airfield and crops. The gang faces chases, crashes, and unexpected turns as they try to unravel the mystery. Velma finds a clue linking the ghost to a weed killer, leading them to a barn. They eventually reveal the ghost's identity as Siegfried, a schemer trying to devalue farmland. In the end, the gang and Stooges celebrate their victory with a feast. After this series came the classic The Scooby-Doo Show, which had three seasons and a total of 40 episodes. In the first episode of this series, the gang realizes they don't make much money from their investigation hobbies, so the boys and Scooby take up a job at a construction site. There, they encounter the specter of Ebenezer Crab scaring off workers. The girls discover that Crab practiced witchcraft and disappeared. The gang chases the specter across narrow beams. Thelma and Daphne find clues suggesting Crab's descendant, Nettie, might still be alive. They visit Nettie's house, but leave when they sense danger. Back at the construction site, they learn Nettie is supposedly dead for 50 years. Investigating a receipt for a telescopic lens, they expose the specter as construction workers Jim Rivets and Red Sparks. The duo had used the lens to spy on safes for robberies, but now is cut by the gang. The gang travels to the swampy south to visit Scooby-Doo's cousin, scooby Dumb and his owners, Ma and Pa Skillet, who own a showboat restaurant. The place is haunted by the Gator Ghoul, 
Scaring off customers and ruining the business, they discover the creature is Alice Dovely, the skillet's is made, seeking revenge for being fired from Kooky Cola. Alice wanted to ruin the Finoki Fizz business, planning to sell it to her former employer. The gang sets a trap using batter, flour, and a pan to capture the gator ghoul. They successfully unmask Alice, revealing her scheme and saving Ma and Pa's business. The gang visits Shaggy's zillionaire uncle Shagworthy in New England and finds themselves caught in a mystery and involving a supposedly haunted castle. During a magic show by Zarko, things go wrong and the gang encounters Merlin in the Black Knight, who appears to have kidnapped the castle caretaker. As they explore the castle, they uncover strange happenings and ghostly illusions. Eventually, they discover that the haunting appearances are elaborate tricks orchestrated by Zarko, who is disguised as the caretaker. Zarko's motive is to frighten everyone away and search for Shagworthy's jewels. The gang exposes Zarko's deception, solves the mystery, and enjoys a banquet with Shagworthy. Mystery Inc. goes to Daphne's Uncle Matt's ranch, where they face a ghostly flying bull. The rancher, Sam Farron, reports missing cattle, and Uncle Matt tells them about Tamuka, a legendary flying bull. While investigating, Uncle Matt disappears. The gang finds a secret pasture with stolen cows and encounters that ghostly Indian figure. Fred, Daphne, and Velma get trapped, while Shaggy and Scooby deal with an eagle. They uncover a robotic flying bull used by rustlers to hide cattle theft. Shaggy and Scooby go undercover as cows to expose the rustlers, who turn out to be Lenny, the cook, and Sam Farron. Uncle Matt explains his disappearance, and the gang humorously mistakes a real cow for Shaggy and Scooby in the end. The gang goes to Viking Lake to visit Velma's Uncle John, finding his cabin empty. Uncle John's journal mentions strange things with a ghostly Viking ship. Scooby and Shaggy encounter the ghost ship and Vikings, leading the gang to split up. In town, they inform the sheriff and learn about two missing geologists. At the museum, they decode Viking runes, revealing an evil curse. Back at the lake, they discover an underground operation involving the missing geologists and the museum curator. They rescue Uncle John, capture the villains, and expose their uranium-related scheme. The gang, along with Scooby Dumb, goes to Great Skull Island for Daphne's friend Lisa, who is set to inherit her family's hotel. Rumors of vampires circulate, and they deliver a mysterious coffin to Mr. Dracul at the hotel. A vampire scares Daphne, leading the gang to investigate. Scooby Dumb finds a ventilating duct, and during their exploration, Lisa turns into a vampire. They discover a clue involving a dog whistle and a paper about exotic bats. Lisa's uncle, Leon, is revealed as Gramps the Vamp, planning to take over the hotel. Lisa is freed, and she rewards the gang with hamburgers, leaving Shaggy hungry due to Scooby's voracious appetite. In another episode, we're introduced to another cousin of Scooby-Doo named Scooby-D, who is a famous film star. On a set of Scooby-D's film remake Phantom of Dixie, the gang, along with scooby Dumb, faces a mystery involving the ghost of the long-deceased actor Milo Booth. Threatening notes lead to a train journey where Scooby-D is targeted by the Phantom. The gang investigates on the train, encountering a mysterious coffin, a decoy Scooby-D, and uncoupling from the main train. In Boothville, a film museum reveals clues and Velma unveils the culprit, Jim Moss, the security chief who aimed to profit by switching Scooby-D with a disguised dog. The gang captures Moss and Scooby-D wins the Golden Rover. Daphne wants to prove that his spooky house isn't haunted, so she spends the night there with Shaggy, Scooby, and Scrappy. When she locks them in with the time lock, the trio experiences creepy things like a ghostly face in the fire and animated animal heads. Daphne, unaware of this, reads eerie tales from a diary, not believing Shaggy's claims. When the house seems to sink into the ground, Shaggy and Scooby think it's supernatural, but Daphne thinks it's just their nerves. Frustrated, she suggests they see a doctor, ending their spooky adventure. The gang leaves, and the house mysteriously vanishes. The gang is at Hillside High School investigating the creature from Chem Lab. They meet Daphne's cousin Jennifer and her crush Toby Wallace. The creature has been causing trouble, even canceling the dance. In the chemistry lab, they find a clue, a piece of the creature's skin. Daphne says it for analysis. While exploring the gym, they find out the creature is just a painted foam rubber disguise. They discover a computer disc dropped 
grabbed by the creature and head to the computer room. Shaggy and Scooby, distracted by food, encounter the creature again in home economics class. Daphne solves the mystery, revealing Toby Wallace as the culprit who was illegally copying video games. The school dance is back on, and Scooby does his creature dance at the celebration. Scooby, Shaggy, Daphne, and Scrappy go to a carnival hosted by their former science teacher, Mr. McDabble. While exploring, they see a clown coming out of a jack-in-the-box. Inside a tent, they meet Mr. McDabble and his student assistant, Jerry. Mr. McDabble disappears mysteriously and a clown starts chasing them. They find Mr. McDabble tied up and during a pie-eating contest, Scooby defends himself by throwing a pie at the clown. The clown turns out to be Jerry. They unmask him and find out that the real Ruby was with Mr. McDabble and the box contained a raffle prize. Jerry is taken away and, as the gang orders food, Scooby playfully reappears in a clown costume, ending with his signature catchphrase. While filming The Amazing Wonder Car, director Bobby Mogul faces sabotage from the gremlin who warns him to stop directing the film. The gang, on their way to Hollywood, falls for one of Mogul's tricks and accidentally gets hired for the movie. They investigate, find out that Mogul doesn't like reporters, and meet the villain actor Eric. During another stunt, the gremlin sabotages again by spilling oil on the set. The gang discovers that the gremlin is Mickey Hack, Mogul's up upset scriptwriter seeking revenge for changes made to the script. Hack is handed over to the police by Eric. There is another series considered as season two of this one titled The New Scooby-Doo Mysteries. Vincent Van Gool, the magician with extensive knowledge of the supernatural, predicts the upcoming opening of the Chest of Demons, which contains 13 trapped ghosts. Meanwhile, the gang, expecting a Hawaiian vacation, ends up in the Himalayas due to a wrong map. In a temple, two spirits named Bogle and Weird plan to use the gang to open the chest. A crash leads to their arrest in a cursed town where everyone turns into werewolves. Daphne transforms, but Flim Flam's Lots of Luck Joy Juice cures her. They escape from the werewolves and enter the temple, unintentionally releasing the ghosts from the chest. Van Gool tasks them with recapturing the ghosts, and the gang, now with a new character called Flim Flam, sets on a new adventure. The gang starts with Maldor the Malevolent, a powerful ghost warlock. Maldor tries to be a thorn in their way, but with their resourcefulness, they manage to trap him in the chest. In the following episodes, the gang continues to capture ghosts, which include Queen Morbidia. They go back to capturing the remaining ghosts, such as Demondo, a demon who could imprison people within books and newspapers, a vampire named Rancor, Professor Phantasma, the ringleader of a circus of horrors, and Zimbulu, a lion demon. The gang goes to Wonderland, an amusement park, and Velma's dream of solving a mystery with Sherlock Holmes comes true. They ride the Wonder World train with an antique collector named Alexander Walhouse. In the London World section, Velma teams up with Sherlock Holmes to solve the theft of the crown jewels. The Night Ghoul of London, a monster posing as a guard, causes trouble, but the gang discovers it's not a robot, but a real criminal. As the Night Ghoul runs away, they find the stolen jewels hidden in Wonder World. Eventually, they reveal that Mr. Marino, the park's host, is the mastermind behind the chaos, using the park for his criminal plans. The gang goes to Tokyo for a baseball game and investigates a spooky dragon beast scaring players. The stadium owner, Mr. Husai, wants to sell because of the beast. They find fireworks at an American-linked factory and suspect something fishy. Velma figures out that a fake trophy is a clue. At the stadium, they reveal the dragon beast is Mr. Husai. He made it up to hide something the real baseball diamond. The gang's smart thinking exposes his plan and the stadium is back to normal. The gang goes to Alcatraz Island in San Francisco and meets the lady vampire of the bay. Daphne gets sick and Scooby, Scrappy, and Shaggy see the Lady Vampire, starting a spooky adventure. People believe the Lady Vampire, who has Transylvanian roots, doesn't show up in mirrors. When they see Daphne without a reflection, Scooby and Shaggy get scared, thinking she's a vampire. While finding stolen jewels, they catch the real vampire, showing Mrs. Cornell is the thief, Lefty Callahan. They have a thrilling chase at Fisherman's Wharf and the Opera House, solving the mystery and catching Lefty. In the end, Shaggy and the dogs apologize to Daphne for assuming she is a vampire. In Atlantic City, the gang goes to a magic show by Morgan and Lorraine. The show gets messed up when the ghost of the great Hal Haldani shows up and takes a black pearl. They investigate at a fair where another magician, Conrad the Conjurer, is introduced. The ghostly encounters keep happening 
and Velma figures out that Morgan might be the leading suspect. The gang cleverly exposes that the ghost isn't real, and they trap Morgan. The stolen black pearl was just a trick, and they find the real one. Morgan is unmasked as the one behind it all, trying to frame Haldane, and just like that, the gang solves another mystery. While exploring mysterious snow creature attacks at a snowboarding competition, the gang discovers that former champion Avalanche Anderson is the culprit. Fred gets injured, leaving Daphne, Velma, Shaggy, and Scooby to uncover the truth. They find a device in an abandoned ski jump and learn that Avalanche Anderson, wanting to regain fame, created the creature using virtual reality. Shaggy becomes a decoy. And during a chase, the transparent creature shatters. An avalanche caused by Velma's sneeze foils Avalanche Anderson's escape, leading to his capture, which is pretty ironic if I say so myself. After watching a scary movie, Shaggy and Scooby get scared when their van, the Mystery Machine, seems to come alive and chase them. They tell the rest of the gang, but the van looks normal. When Fred drives, the van takes control, and Scooby saves the day with a parachute. As the gang looks into things, they discover the Mystery kids, Andy and Mandy, who used to be in a band. The mystery machine used to be their tour bus and belonged to their keyboardist, Flash Flanagan. As they dug deeper, they found out about Randy, the hidden brother. Turns out, the van was moving on its own because of a special wireless thing controlled by Susan, the mom of the mystery kids. Susan wanted her kids to be famous again after Flash Flanagan passed away. But in a surprising twist, the brothers decided to quit and make up with Randy, which really surprised and upset Susan. The gang goes to New Mexico to see Shaggy's friend, Jimmy Proudwolf. They hear about a giant hawk called the Wakumi, which snatches Shaggy's art project for an art show. The gang, along with a mountain climber named Cody Long, goes up a mountain to solve the mystery. They find out about a secret research operation with a meteor. The Wakumi turns out to be a glider controlled by Colonel Henry Thornwald, who used the legend to hide the meteor research. The gang exposes Thornwald, and Shaggy comes up with a cool idea to fix his art project by turning Scooby into a lifelike sand sculpture. The gang is playing mini golf, and Shaggy competes with Cougar Forest and Miranda Wright. Velma gets scared of clowns due to a bad memory from her childhood when a clown game is found. A robot clown messes up the game, and Shaggy distracts it with popcorn and birds to win. Shaggy, Fred, and Daphne investigate and discover the mayor is upset about his son Gary liking golf. Shaggy thinks Cougar is the culprit, but the clown surprises everyone by eating him. It turns out Mayor Snow Snipper is the one behind the clown, trying to teach his son a lesson by messing up the game. Velma overcomes her fear, and Shaggy wins the mini golf, ending with a Scooby-themed course. Shaggy and Scooby-Doo are enjoying the fancy things in Shaggy's rich Uncle Albert Shaggleford's mansion. They discover super-powered Scooby snacks, a snack bot, and lots of cool gadgets. They find a message from Uncle Albert saying he's been undercover, fighting against the evil Dr. Fibes for two years. Shaggy, Scooby, and their robot friend Robbie go on a mission to save Uncle Albert from Fives' lair. To sneak in, they pretend to be Fives' agents, facing funny challenges and clumsy henchmen. Eventually, they uncover that Uncle Albert was pretending to be Dr. Trembla, Fives' right-hand man, secretly working against him. When they confront Fives, he triggers the lair's self-destruct. Shaggy, with a super-fast Scooby snack, rescues Uncle Albert and the agents, while Fives has a funny downfall. The episode ends with Shaggy planning a big celebration at the mansion to mark their victory over Fives' evil plans. The gang gets into trouble with Sheriff Stone after solving a mystery, and they get a lecture about not meddling in police stuff. Meanwhile, a new mystery starts in Crystal Cove involving green slime and bodies wrapped up like cocoons. The gang finds a secret entrance in the Crystal Cove caves and faces off with the slime mutant. When they reveal the culprit, Professor Raffalo, they learn that he was trying to frame Franklin Fruitmeyer for the bank robbery. Just when they think it's over, they get a mysterious mysterious call from Mr. E, hinting at even bigger mysteries connected to the curse of Crystal Cove. Now, somewhere between the episodes, we learn that Velma and Shaggy have started dating while Daph has hots for Fred. Fred doesn't notice Daphne's hints about prom because he's busy with a new student, Alice May. During prom, Scooby spots a ghost girl, and the gang discovers that 
that Alice is behind it. After putting her behind bars, they find her yearbook revealing the identities of some missing kids, Brad Childs, Judy Reeves, Ricky Owens, Cassidy Williams, and their mascot, Professor Pericles. They were in a mystery-solving club called Mystery Incorporated, similar to Scooby's gang. Later, Alice is bailed out of jail by Mr. E's associate, Ed Machine, confirming that everything went according to plan. After solving a mystery at the fair, the gang plans to enjoy the evening, but someone dressed as an executioner accidentally bumps into Velma, dropping a box with Mr. E's seal. Inside, Velma finds a mysterious note urging her not to give up because this has all happened before. There's also an old photo of the missing Mystery Incorporated with Professor Pericles circled in red pen. This leaves Velma curious and determined to figure out the mysterious message. One day, Velma asks Shaggy to choose between her and Scooby. Before they can talk about it, a giant spider shows up. Surprisingly, it turns out to be Jason, who likes Velma and tries to impress her with a spider robot. Later, Velma's mom's tour bus is attacked by a fright hound and Scooby gets wrongly accused. The police take Scooby away and despite Velma's attempts to comfort him, Shaggy remains saddened by Scooby's absence. The gang visits Scooby in the animal asylum where they meet Professor Pericles, the mascot of the original Mystery Incorporated, who gives them a mysterious warning. Eventually, they unmask the hound, revealing Jason mom, who wanted revenge for how she thought the gang mistreated her son. Despite solving the mystery, Velma is left heartbroken as Shaggy chooses Scooby over her. Meanwhile, Professor Pericles escapes, leaving a cryptic message from Mr. E to follow the parrot. After cracking another case, Daphne and Fred find themselves stuck in a building after it closes for the day. With no way to get out until morning, Daphne sees the silver lining and enjoys a sort of date with Fred, bringing their ongoing romance a little further. In Crystal Cove, chaos erupts during a high school soccer game when Aphrodite, the goddess of love, appears. She spreads mysterious flowers that enchant the townspeople, causing a riot. The gang falls under the love spell, but Scooby manages to stay clear of it. Pericles, who escaped from prison, asks Scooby for help to gather ingredients for an antidote to counteract Aphrodite's love potion. After successfully creating the antidote, they face Aphrodite's minions, escape, and free the town from the love spell. The gang discovers that Aphrodite is actually Amanda Smythe, seeking revenge for a prom prank. They stop her plan to destroy Crystal Cove, However, Pericles reveals he orchestrated the whole mystery to uncover the curse of Crystal Cove, hinting at a cursed treasure beneath the town that could bring its end. Velma frustrated with the lack of mysteries, gets an anonymous email about the disappearing boats and a link to a haunted oil platform. Despite meeting a mysterious mermaid named Amy, the gang investigates the platform and uncovers a plan by Ernesto and his group to fake a crisis and profit from environmental protests. In the end, Velma confronts Angel Dynamite, suspecting her to be Cassidy Williams, a member of the original Mystery Incorporated who vanished years ago. Later on, Angel, who's secretly collaborating with Mr. E, informs him that she placed a listening device on Velma. She reveals that Shaggy and Scooby have the disc, and Mr. E assures her that everything will be fine, as Scooby is more trustworthy than Pericles ever was. In the next episode, Velma reaches a point where she's had enough of Shaggy neglecting her. She tells Shaggy that she just wants to be friends. Although Shaggy feels sad at first, he eventually doesn't mind and accepts the change in their relationship. Following that, Professor Pericles orchestrated a plan to steal a piece of something called the planispheric disc taken by the mayor years ago. As he escapes with the disc piece, the gang remains uncertain about the overall situation. After solving another case involving the piranha goat, Fred decides to make a big move. He proposes to Daphne and seals the moment with an onion ring. Happily surprised, Daphne accepts the proposal, but with one condition, they get married after graduation. The two share a kiss, celebrating this special moment in their relationship. When the gang gets hold of and deciphers their Spanish planispheric disc piece, they're attacked by the Obliteratrix, who wants to destroy Mystery Incorporated. Turns out, this Obliteratrix is Alice May, manipulated by Mr. E to distract the gang from protecting their piece of the disc. Afterward, the gang learns from Cassidy Williams that the original Mystery Incorporated faced threats 
Records and had to leave the town after discovering the same disc pieces. Despite the warnings, the current gang decides to keep their peace and continues the mystery, vowing not to let others dictate when it ends. In a flashback from 20 years ago, the original Mystery Incorporated finds one piece of the Planus Fabric disc but accidentally triggers a trap. In the present, the gang gets a mysterious message from Velma to meet at midnight. Sneaking into City Hall for clues, they encounter the freak of Crystal Cove. Without knowing it, they activate Velma's trap and get caught by Sheriff Stone. Fred figures out the freak is actually his dad, Mayor Jones, who admits to manipulating things to get the treasure. This revelation leads to Fred finding out about his true parentage. He decides to leave town and Mystery Incorporated falls apart. The gang members go through personal crises. Fred breaks off his engagement with Daphne. Shaggy and Scooby are sent away and Velma is blamed by Daphne for not telling the truth. Scooby promises to bring the gang back together and stop Professor Pericles, who now has two pieces of the disc. Months after Mystery Incorporated breaks up, Crystal Cove is in chaos. Mayor Nettles, following the advice of a masked figure, looks for the second version of Mystery Inc. Scooby escapes from a farm and reunites with Mayor Nettles. Shaggy and Scooby find Fred, who looks messy, and convince him to join again. Velma, wearing a mask, reveals herself and brings the gang back together. They try to solve the mysteries in Crystal Cove, facing a villain called Crybaby Clown. The havoc caused by Crybaby Clown gets worse, and Fred feels hopeless, realizing that Mystery Incorporated won't be the same without Daphne, who refuses to come back. For the time being, they have Marcy Fleech, also known as Hot Dog Water, to join the team, and they uncover another piece of the disc. Fred opens up about Daphne during therapy, and goes to extremes by kidnapping her for a picnic, but she rejects him again as she's now dating someone named Baylor Hotner. Later, when the crybaby clown shows up again, the gang reveals that Baylor is behind it all. He came to town for filmmaking and used Daphne for his project. Daphne breaks up with him and rejoins the gang, leaving Hot Dog Water uncertain about her role in the group. Being replaced, she joins hands with Mr. E and, all of a sudden, Fred's real parents, Brad Childs and Judy Reeves, along with their pet dog, Nova returned to his life. Fred's real parents, Brad and Judy, finally talk to him and say he can ask any questions. Fred wonders why they stayed away, and they explain that Mayor Jones threatened to hurt him if they came back. At the same time, the gang finds another part of the planispheric disc. Later, it is revealed that Mr. E is Rick Owens, a member of the original Mystery Inc. gang who nursed and injured Pericles back to health as a child. While looking into Dark Lilith, the gang and some people from Scorpion Ridge are Attacked. They find out that Dark Lilith is actually hot dog water, and she confesses to planning everything for Mr. E. As a gesture of friendship, she hands over the piece of the disc. The gang leaves, worried about the final piece of the puzzle. Mystery Incorporated deals with a bunch of robot attacks aimed at Cassidy Williams. When they investigate, they find out the robots came from an underwater base called the Midnight Zone, controlled by Professor Pericles. In a showdown, the base blows up and it looks like Cassidy sacrificed herself. Pericles gets away and there are unanswered questions about what really happened to Cassidy. Sadly, Brad and Judy are also working with Mr. E, who instructs them to steal the three pieces of the disc from the gang. Later on, the gang collects all the pieces and assembles the disc. Velma makes a machine to read it and the only word that shows up is Nibiru. Afterward, Mr. E faces betrayal from Brad Brad and Judy, and Pericles implants mutated cobra larvae in his spine, gaining control over him. Pericles reveals his plan to steal the planispheric disc from the gang and destroy them. As the gang gets closer to solving more mysteries, Scooby has a strange encounter with a being from another dimension inside Nova's body. This being warns Scooby that he's in danger and explains that she's the one of the Anunnaki, creatures that visit Earth every few thousand years during a time called Nibiru. The Anunnaki live inside different animals, which is why some, like Scooby, can talk and have a history with humans. However, the most evil one is trapped in a crystal sarcophagus that must never be released. She tells Scooby that he needs to destroy it to save his friends, himself, and the whole world. The gang investigates Scooby's nightmares and consults Professor Horatio Karen, an expert on the supernatural. Karen reveals the existence of the Sitting Room, a dimension between time and space connecting Scooby's nightmares to the cursed treasure and the monstrous freak. To face the freak, the gang uses hypnosis to enter the sitting room during sleep, encountering different versions of Mystery Incorporated from various timelines, each with a key. The monstrous freak shows up, 
and the gang is chased through different times. The gang, with Velma worried about her interview, reunites and takes on a mystery at the university haunted by Elias Kingston's ghost. Velma makes a deal with the dean. If they solve the mystery, she gets accepted. If not, she's denied. While investigating, they find a list of scared-off students and suspect something fishy. They go through chases, chaos in the library, and adventures on the rooftop, finally revealing the culprits as Joe, the head of security, and his son Mitchell, seeking revenge for being rejected. In the end, Velma decides not to accept the university offer and stays with her friends. During a not-so-exciting baseball game at Middleton Stadium, a player sees a ghostly figure. Meanwhile, Shaggy is excited about his favorite baseball team and convinces the gang to investigate. As they gather clues, they discover that the ghostly figure is Dustin seeking revenge for being cut from the team. Using clever baseball-themed tactics, the game traps Dustin, solving the mystery. In the desert, some kids camping see a UFO crash, leading them to find an alien. At the same time, the Mystery Inc. gang explores the area and here's a warning about an alien from one of the kids. They get captured by military people, led by Colonel Peterson, who thinks they might be aliens. The gang is taken to Area 53, a place two stories above Area 51, where they find clues like a crashed spaceship and a mysterious device. While investigating, they encounter a real alien that chases them through the facility. It turns out the alien is General Stahl, who faked the whole thing to get more funding for Area 53. Fred exposes Snall's plan, and the gang escapes the high-security ward, solving the mystery and leaving Stahl to face the consequences. In a courtroom, the gang is accused of various things, especially Fred, who is blamed for being a toxic mutant, scaring a deserted town called Safety Springs. Daphne defends Fred, and the gang investigates Safety Springs, facing mysterious dangers in the so-called Toxic Mutant. As the courtroom story unfolds, it's shown that District Attorney Dayton Knight created the Toxic Mutant story to distract everyone while he and his henchmen stole from the deserted town. Fred, who was initially arrested, is proven innocent when Daphne reveals Knight's plan. Years ago, Fred and his friends come across a witch's house while trick-or-treating on Halloween. The witch's house vanishes, leaving a lasting impact on Fred. 
In the present, the gang celebrates Halloween, but Fred is haunted by memories of past Halloween mysteries. They rediscover the witch's house, now connected to a series of Halloween disturbances. During their investigation, they find clues related to ancient Gaelic traditions. The witch, revealed as Mrs. Clune and her husband, had a plan to put an end to Halloween due to their dislike of its commercialization. The gang exposes their scheme, linking Mrs. Clune to various disruptions in towns over the years. Mrs. Clune is arrested, and the gang enjoys Halloween with another solved mystery. At the beginning of the series, Velma Dinkley, a girl who loves solving mysteries, has a disagreement with Daphne, a popular girl she doesn't like, at Crystal Cove High School. Things get more complicated when another popular girl named Brenda is found dead without her brain in Velma's locker. The police, who aren't very good at their job, give Velma a choice, solve the murder or get arrested. Velma, dealing with hallucinations from her mother's disappearance, gathers a group of friends including Fred Jones and Norville, who is basically an African-American shaggy. She thinks Fred's camera has important evidence and discovers surprising details. Fred ends up getting wrongly arrested, and as Norville drives Velma home, they find another body without a brain, leading to a bigger mystery. As Velma tries to solve the murder of her missing mother, Daphne faces financial struggles and starts selling drugs to fund her search for her birth parents. Amon, Velma's dad, becomes Fred's lawyer to prove his innocence, but Fred's bumbling behavior makes things challenging. Velma experiences hallucinations, and a surprising kiss between her and Daphne adds a romantic twist to the story. While Fred undergoes therapy from Norville, chaos ensues. After the murder of another girl named Lola, Fred is declared innocent, and the mayor and sheriff create a controversial protection plan for the hottest girls in the high school. Daphne and Norville investigate the crystal mines, encountering eerie incidents, while a man's girlfriend Sophie gives birth to Velma's half-sister Amanda. Meanwhile, Norville falls for a girl named Gigi. Look, I'm not going to put you through the same pain I experienced while watching this show, so I'll just get to the ending here. After 10 episodes that felt like 10 years, Velma successfully finds her missing mother and discovers that Fred's mom, Victoria, is the killer. Victoria had a hypnotic plan to switch Daphne's brain with Fred's because she thought Daphne was smart enough to run the family business and she needed her brain. Victoria calls for backup to eliminate the gang, but things go awry and she accidentally gets killed. With the serial killer threat over, Velma feels relieved. The mayor declares Vermin Dorkley Day to honor Velma for saving the town, and Fred, Daphne, and Norville receive keys to the city. Velma gives her notes to the sheriff, who invites her to join the force as a detective. However, as the sheriff files away Velma's notes, the lights go out, he screams, and blood splatters the windows, hinting at a new mystery. Velma is like that time your friend said they could make a better pizza than the local joint, and you ended up with pineapple and anchovies on cardboard. They took a beloved show about solving mysteries, threw it in a blender with some moral superiority, and the result is a concoction that has you questioning life choices. It's like watching a group of aliens try to impersonate humans, with Velma leading the charge and being more judgmental than your grandma at family dinner. Norville's the only one holding on to a shred of sanity, but even he can't escape the cringeworthy dialogue. Fred is basically a handsome toddler trapped in a teenager's body, drool included. The only ray of sunshine is Daphne, who manages to stay somewhat likable. If you're a classic Scooby-Doo fan, attempting to sit through the first episode might feel like voluntarily jumping into a pit of bad decisions. Pray for a miracle if there's a second season, or at least a script that's less awful than pineapple on pizza. Until then, this is it from us. See you in the next one.